So I just thought I'd do a video covering how we actually set up the DaVinci Machine robot on the outside because all my videos so far have just kind of focused on what goes on on the inside when we're operating on the patient. So this is how you actually set up the machine, that's the DaVinci XI. Um, some people in the department call it the Hercules just because it's really massive and hard to manoeuvre around and the patient's already laid in the bed and anaesthetised and the ports have been put in so there's four ports put in these ports can be 8, 10 or 12 millimetres um, and the way the robot's set up is if you can see there's a green light at the top and on the skin kind of down by the left hand side if you rewind it a bit you can see the robot getting pushed in and that green LED light which is on the skin gets put over the second port and into that second port goes the endoscope which you'll see later on and then what your job is to do is to kind of maneuver all four of the arms of the robot um, using it's got a protective cover on it so you don't uh, desterilize the area and you move the arms and get them set up ready in order for the robots to get all the equipment put in the way this works is you attach a robot uh, to the port which are already placed in the patient which you'll be able to see uh, Mr. Ian Paul doing here and it's quite simple really you just you just click the ports onto one another, make a clicking sound and then you know you're you're ready to go and that that port can move around and it was no chance of it falling out of a patient or ripping anything or doing anything bad and then what you do is you attach the instrument onto the robot at the top here so this is the endoscope and this will allow us to look inside of a patient so you would just attach it to the robot and then you advance it in slowly so you'll see him slowly push it in here and um, you'll be able to see a view of the shoulder of a person in the red scrubs of what happened. So this person we're operating on has a thymoma, a, a tumour of a thymus gland which sits on top of a heart. And what you do is you find the target organ, so we're operating on the thymus, that's the target organ. And you press a button and if you look at what the robot's going to do now, it's going to kind of spin around in space. The reason it does this is quite clever, it's to make sure that when you attach all of the ports to all of the arms and when you're operating from the centre console, it means that none of the arms are going to bump into each other when you're operating so you can have all the instruments in and then you don't need to worry about any kind of entanglement of the arms. So Mr. Paul's just attaching the rest of the arms up here. So there's typically there's four ports, there's four arms, the endoscope goes in arm two, and then in arms one, three and four you can have lots of different instruments you can have. Staplers, you can have Cadier forceps, Maryland forceps, you can have bipolar, unipolar power, well it's monopolar, you can have bipolar or monopolar power. Um, and you can interchange these instruments throughout the operation. So this is what the robot actually looks like when it's set up and operating. In the background you can see Mr. Paul operating. And then we actually are lucky at James Cook because we have a dual console approach. So you can ha have the trainees operating on one of the consoles and you can have the consultant sat on the other and it's kind of like teaching you how to drive and if anything is about to go wrong the consultant can step in and it allows for the trainees to get more exposure to robotic surgery.